Hello and welcome to the Gallant Few of the Rangers podcast. Uh, something a wee bit different today, guys. Uh, I'm delighted to have Will with me, uh, the author of a, a wonderful book on, on Chelsea, which is, uh, and it's Neil Fitzsimon, who is uh, somewhere in London. I'm not, I'm not sure where, but Neil, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Actually, I, I live on the Isle of Wight now. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yeah, we, you mentioned we that in your book that you had a VFO. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, I, I, from Hemel Hempstead. So, are you, are you now working down there or are you, uh, have you stopped uh, all that nonsense? Oh, I stopped all that nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> that's all behind us now. Yeah. Yeah. I still do bits because I've got like um, a publishing deal, like music in France. So, I do bits and pieces for them. We've got a studio in our house. So, that's about the only uh, stuff I get involved in now. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, uh, I, I, you've probably just uh, broke into it there, but in terms of, uh, I mean, obviously the Gallant podcast uh, listeners will, will know who I am, but uh, mm. they don't know who you are. So if you could just give us, you know, two or three minutes of just telling me uh, who you are and, and how did you end up at, at Chelsea? Because I must admit it wasn't apparent. Uh, to me from from going through your book that you know how you ended up a Chelsea fan because you seem to be in amongst the enemy most of the time um well actually I was uh, born like in the Elephant and Castle which is like southeast London just over the river um yeah. and I had three uh uncles like all in their 20s one was a Chelsea supporter one was Spurs and one was Millwall uh and the Chelsea won uh, talked me into it and he it, it didn't have to do a lot of persuading because I really loved their kit and everything. And I thought they looked great, you know, like in the, in the sixties and the seventies. So that's how I got into it. And, uh, my dad took me a few times. Um, and then, uh, he didn't really support Chelsea. So he wasn't too bothered about going again. So I stood my ground and said, I want to go on my own. And I was like 13 at the time. So I started going to, uh, games on my own trekking across London and uh, various things then my sister joined me the following year so she had yeah, two of us then uh, both going so yeah that's how I got involved in it and the first season I started supporting them they won the FA Cup which was a, a pretty good start yeah mm. I, I, actually, I can actually remember because obviously we're of a, a similar age Neil yeah so uh, I do recall you know the FA Cup final of 1970 you know and, and it going to the replay yeah, which was Old Trafford, wasn't it? it? Was Old Trafford? Yeah, play? yeah. I went to both those games. Um, Did you? Yeah, yeah um, because um, the, the the Wembley one, it was like on a voucher system, and I had all the home programs, and my sister did. And for the replay, um, we, uh, my dad was working with uh, the sister of Victor Rowton, who was the chief uh, football writer for the Evening News, I think it was. So he got uh, tickets for me and my sister. But we could only go up there on the proviso that somebody else went along with us. And I met this bloke um, at the games. He was about 27 and reluctantly allowed us to tag along with him up to Manchester, which was a, a brilliant night, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's uncanny because my first game at Ibrox, you know, obviously I'm a, a Rangers man. Yeah. My first game was 1969. All so right. we were keep being introduced to football, you know, and again, I, I mean, I was probably just a couple of years younger than you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was I was going to Ibrox on my own. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was as young as 10. Yeah. And that was, I mean, it wasn't too far from me because, I mean, I was, it was just a trek across Glasgow for me. But yeah. so I, I would just say from, even from the outset, a lot of what you've written in your book. Yeah. Uh, kind of just strikes a chord with me. Yeah, you know, football at that time, and and you know, get hook, getting hooked on the club, and going, you going to obviously the bridge, and me going to Ibrox. Yeah, and and I think the atmospheres that we were probably walking into were uncannily similar. It yeah, was, it just from, from reading, you know, your and some of the comments that you made just about, you know, the, the kind of bias and and with the BBC <laughs> and some of the press when. You know, yeah. they would never put Chelsea in a good light. You know, yeah. it was just, you know. Uh, yeah. Was... I was, um, 
I, I, the first game I went to with uh, my dad was against Leeds, and I think it was November '68. And uh, I've written about this because mm. I, I had two. Uh, I've had two other books out as well about Chelsea. Mm. This is the third mm. one. Um, it was nil nil against Leeds with five minutes to go. My dad said, "Oh, well, there's never going to be a goal. Let's go." So reluctantly, I. And we were sitting in the stand, which I didn't want to really do because I wanted it to be like in the shed, you know, it was a bit more exciting. So we were walking outside Stamford Bridge and there was like a dull roar coming in from the ground. And we turned around, this bloke came out and said, oh, Leeds have just scored. Now, I had never seen, a, I think I'd seen England play a couple of times, but I'd never seen the goal at the bridge. And I did, you know, I wasn't best pleased that, um, mm-hmm. that Le- 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 Leeds had taken the lead. Um, yeah. and my dad said, oh, come on, let's just go. He said, you wouldn't want to see that lot winning anyway, would you? And then we got a bit further down the road, and there was a tremendous roar. And this bloke ran past and said, oh, Osgood equalised in the last minute. And I was, I couldn't speak to my dad. I just, <laughs> yeah. yeah he, the, the next game he took me to was against Wolves, and uh, Wolves had scored th- through a penalty, then Osgood missed the penalty. And again, with five minutes to go, he said, oh, let's go. They're not going to score. And I, I wouldn't budge. And duly, in the last minute, Osgood equalised with a penalty. So he, he's lucky that he didn't get me to go a second. And then the first one the first one I went to on my own was against Sunderland at the bridge, and we beat them 5-1. Um, and after that, that was it then, really. I was just like a regular from then on. That was it, yeah, in front of the tea stand. Yeah, oh yeah, but yeah, the old the old tea bar there with the revolting yeah. burgers and the terrible hot dogs and everything they had there. Yeah, it was it was all pretty basic back in those days, really. Oh yeah, that was uh, the fare was uh, pretty standard. I can tell you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I, I don't think anyone was turning up for the food. That's for sure. No, no, we we used to go. There used to be a burger van outside Stamford Bridge, right near the. The entrance to the north, uh, the north terrace that did really brilliant burgers. I mean, they were absolutely. But if you went inside the ground, I mean, then you were taking your life into your own hands because <laughs> that, that, those things were just floating round in like like pond water. You know, it looked pretty, pretty disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, listen, I, I, I know only too well. Listen, Neil, I'm going. I'm going to start you off uh, kind of in the middle here because. Yeah. There was one wee uh, phrase that you, you, you and I've and I've written it down, which you used, which I, I could chime with. You know, this was, was just, it, it, that's when I kind of realised. You know, we we could almost be related. This is yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. This is so relatable. So you wrote, you've written. There's no doubt that being a supporter of a team is almost tougher than being being one of the players. Yeah, <laughs> I thought, I, ain't that the truth? You know, and I, yeah. So I'm. Mean, what what brought you to that conclusion? Because I'm I'm going to uh, support you in this argument, but yeah, I'm not uh, just. Uh... Well, I, I think I think for the players because they're involved in it, but it's just I think it's the feeling of helplessness when you're standing on the terraces because you're putting um, your trust and faith in those eleven out there. Uh, and I used to, I mean, I, I I used to be like a nervous wreck, but then when I used to play football, I played quite a bit of football. I mean, obviously not to that standard. When you're involved in it, it doesn't seem it doesn't get you like that. But when you're just standing watching on, uh, yeah. And I was I've always been a like really ner- nervy. I mean, when I went to some of my first games at Chelsea, I was sick in the toilets with the thought of what was going to happen that afternoon. It really, yeah. it oh yeah, I, it it totally took over my life. I mean, my dad got. Uh, Mum and Dad both got fed up with my moods if they'd lost. I was a t- terrible loser. I'm still pretty bad today. Not quite as bad. Yeah. Uh, mm, I, I think that's... Go on. Sorry, I think I was probably in a more fortunate position, you know, because Rangers, you know, when I started supporting them, you could, because, you know, as, as, as everyone knows, there are pretty much only two clubs in Scotland. So, yeah. you know... Or, or, our ability to pick up trophies, you know, although, you know, we've had our lean spells, you know, and we've yeah. just come out of one particularly bad lean spell. But, you know, we're, we're always there or thereabouts. You know, a bad yeah. season for us, you know, would be, uh, is, is finishing second. I mean, yeah. catastrophe is, is finishing third. Uh, yeah. And, you know, expectation is that we finish first. So, I, I guess, yeah. so there's no kind of difference to it, whereas, you know, yeah. you're in a, 
there are lots of clubs down there, as you found out, you know, when you, every time you come up against Shrewsbury. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, yeah, they they battered us. Uh, was it? Yeah, in that eighty two, eighty three season, I think it was. I yeah. can't remember. I remember that? Yeah, I mean, when I started off with Chelsea, they were, you know, they they won the FA Cup and Cup Winners Cup in consecutive seasons, but. Um, it soon turned into a bit of a nightmare, really, from 1972 onwards, after we'd lost to Stoke in the League Cup final. Uh, that, really, and we'd lost to Orient in the Cup a week before, uh, after being 2-0 up. After that, I mean, what with the building of that stand, the stand, and the, they were totally broke. I saw the other side of football very quickly. And by 1975, I'd, I'd witnessed my first ever relegation, <laughs> which, yeah. which was a bit of a shock. Yeah, well, so, and, and then, you know, so, yeah, particularly lean years, I mean, the the building of the stand, you know, and, and in its day, it was a mighty, a mighty impressive structure. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, I've been to old, I was at uh, Stamford Bridge, you know, in, in the early 80s, I've been, a, I went there a few times. Yeah. And it was kind of out, almost out of place. Yeah. So we, had, you know, we had the rest of the ground and then the, the south stand was... Was a, a superb piece of yeah. engineering. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, because the rest of the ground looked incongruous, didn't it, by the side of it? Because it was, yeah. like, it, I mean, when I first went, like you know, like uh, in the late sixties, the old East Stand was uh, was really nice and everything, and the ground looked quite, you know, it looked dated but quaint. But as the when the new stand was put up, the rest of the ground just looked like it was tumbling down. I mean, there used to be an old North Stand in the corner. Yeah. Um, and they had to take that down because it started vibrating whenever like the, the trains went past behind it. So it was a bit of a safety hazard. So he, yeah, it was a bit like a building site. And when that, I mean, during those couple of years when we didn't have a stand on one side, it, the atmosphere there was dreadful because yeah. you could actually see the railway line behind and a graveyard. Yeah. So it, it, it was, and the players were getting changed in a porter cabin as well. It was all pretty grim, you know. Yeah. So I mean, so you you spent the what what was kind of your your thinking of, of this particular because I I don't recall this as being you know a massive resurgence. Obviously, uh, Chelsea getting back to the first division was massive. Yeah. But uh, but when you got back to the you know they were pretty much just probably back just back to where they belonged really rather than it being you know so was this just the the first step in, in, all, in, a, in an anonymous ladder which took you all, all the way to the top of Europe. Yeah, well, I think what, why I said it was a rebirth was that the season before we won the second division title in 84, we'd missed relegation to the third division by two points in 1983. Absolutely. And then uh, there was a massive clear out and then players like Pat Nevin, Joe McLaughlin, Kerry Dixon, and it was a new team practically. You know, it was they just sacked a load of players and got rid of them. And I, I for yeah. one, I, I didn't have a lot of hopes for that season. Just that some of the, where we weren't flirting with relegation, but we absolutely. I mean, some of the football they played that team, and they, you know, they went on to two sixth place finishes. They, the uh, when they got back into the first division, and we would have been in Europe those years if it hadn't been for a certain Liverpool football club who'd. Got yeah. us all banned. <clears throat> well, I've got a couple of stories related to that because yeah, I mean, you you'll probably uh, realise that Scotland's quite a small place. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just about to demonstrate how small it is because I I played with Pat Navin when he was a boy. Oh, did so you? We, yeah, we were both in the the same street team. We both played with Blue Star in the East End of Glasgow. All oh, right. So, yeah. Oh, he's a, a and, great uh, player. Yeah, I mean, well, the, our our. Uh, instruction you know leaving the changing room was just get the ball to part and and, let, and leave let, it, let it, with it. Was, yeah just get the ball <laughs> to him and, and then he would do what he does and oh, yeah. beating 25 players and then and popping on one in. and and i remember one day i mean i'm talking you know what age were we then so i would have been probably late primary school so it would have been 10 11 12 what i was yeah. when when Pat played with us he then moved on to celtic boys club and and then you know he ended up at Clyde, and and then to you guys. Yeah. But he was in Barnard, so he didn't stay too far from me. He no. and, and I stayed in Easterhouse, and Barnard was kind of great. So we were kind of we brought up in the same 
uh, what's not quite a wee fishing village. The East End of right. Glasgow is <laughs> not, yeah. it's probably just the East End of London, only just oh, a right. bit small. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I mean, when he came down, I'd never heard of him. I mean, like a lot of Chelsea supporters, and at the start of the season, he, he couldn't get into the side. Um, and then I think uh, Clive Walker broke his jaw. And then Pat came right. in, and and after that, I mean, Walker ended up being sold because he just couldn't get, because he was absolutely, well, I mean, those type of players are few and far between now. I mean, you, you just don't see them. It's all this pass and move stuff now, not taking a man on. But you know the way I remember the famous one against Newcastle when he took on practically the whole of their team, and just yeah. failed, just failed to score with a cross shot. Yeah. But um, and I I remember him Keegan had a wee word in his ear. Yeah, that was Keegan. Yeah, he nutmegged Keegan right in front of the East Stand. Well, apparently, Keegan mm-hmm. said, "You, uh, you're not going to last very long if you keep on doing that," which I thought was a bit of a blimmin' cheek. Because like, Keegan, when he first came in, was like, you know, like an angry wasp, wasn't he, buzzing around all the place? But yeah, but I really—it's such a shame when he left for Everton. I don't think he ever hit it off at Everton as like he did with us. No, I, I mean, Pat's. He was. Even when I knew him, and his brother and his dad came to every game that he, he ever played when, when I was there. Yeah. So they would, I think his dad came, went everywhere with him. And, yeah, he uh, did, yeah. And so, and I mean, at that time in the early 80s, I was actually staying in London. I oh, was right. staying in Chiswick, which oh, right. was not too far from uh, Stamford Bridge. So I went yeah. to Stamford Bridge a few times. And, yeah. and this one you're not going to believe. I'm, I'm sitting here with my Chelsea top on. Yeah, I can say it, yeah. Because, yeah, on the 28th of April 1984, you know, Chelsea 5, Leeds United 0. Yeah. You, you'll you know that day. I, I was there. Know. Oh, yeah, so was I. Yeah, I'll write about that in the book. I, I went to, uh, yeah, that's when the Leeds supporters got a little bit upset down at the... Uh, <laughs> the and, North and, stand yeah, the, they yeah, the sport rock, got, uh, got a scene to... went out and smoked, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I wrote about that because I went to Covent Garden in the evening, met up with a mate of mine, That's and right, it, was yeah. just, it, it was just full of Chelsea supporters that night. The yeah. whole of Covent Garden, it was a brilliant day, really. I mean, Leeds were an absolute shambles that day, weren't they? I mean, you know, yeah. what a great, what a great club to see them like that. And they were just absolutely like trounce. Yeah, that was a, a brilliant day. Yeah, because one of the, the guys who was playing for Leeds that day was uh, George McCluskey, who they had right. signed from Celtic. So we, I was taking great delight, and in, in, we knew him <laughs> as Chicken George. Right. <laughs> so I was taking great delight, but my abiding memory of the game was, you know, as, as, you, as you pointed out, and, and as I recall, you know, Chelsea scored the fifth quite late on. Yeah, they which, did. You know, which is, and another partial invasion ensued. That's right. So, only for the, the guys to get shooed off. And, and at the end of the game, the Chelsea fans were actually on the touchline. Oh, yeah, that's and, right, yeah. yeah and the Leeds right. players were getting closer and closer to the other touchline, <laughs> knowing that, you know, that the shortest you know distance between them and the tunnel was was a, was a good idea. Yeah, the, yeah, I, I remember. I mean, yeah, I didn't realise until I looked at the... Like, well, I know Lorimer was playing, and that was quite yeah. sad to see a player... But I, I didn't realise that Dennis Irwin played that day for Leeds. Right. He went on to Man United. Yeah. But I I, I, I remember being quite... I, I thought we had a really good chance of beating them when I saw that Leeds had forgotten their away socks and they had to wear the yellow Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea socks, so disorganised were they. You know, the, um, and of course, I remember the great Leeds side of the 1970s. I mean, they were unbelievable. I mean, they, they were horrible. Uh, yeah. You know, the... the, the <laughs> Yeah, brilliant team, but some some real nasty characters. But um, yeah, so yeah, that was a, a a great day, really, and totally unexpected after like the previous season. I say when we just missed getting relegated to the third division, which I I don't think any of the other history would have happened uh, after that. I think that was a big turning point. If yeah, we'd gone, I, I remember gone, it being you know you know a nice bright sunny day, and and there was it was a huge crowd in in, in the yeah. that day. You know, for uh, the expectation that you know the victory is going to take Chelsea. Yeah, back to the that's division. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it was it was great that we actually picked Sheffield Wednesday to the title because I I couldn't stand Sheffield Wednesday because they were just like like a team of like robots, weren't they? Bashing the ball from one end of the pitch to the other, where 
yeah. you know, Chelsea had like Speedy and Dixon and Nevin and all of that and Mickey Thomas and it was a quite a swashbuckling side that played good football. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's one of the most popular sides in Chelsea's history, to be quite honest. That and this the nineteen seventy cup winning team. Yeah, Kenny Dixon was uh, was iconic, you know, I remember yeah. he scored quite a few goals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you mentioned the strip, which uh, I think you perhaps still have. I have, yeah. Yeah, the uh the like the uh horizontal like stripes and everything and uh on the on the blue shirt and the, the away yeah. kit, which was a brilliant, the yellow shirt with the, the stripes on it. Yeah, that was really a great kit. It was something which which also chimed with me, which uh, you mentioned, which was, you know, obviously the famous Chelsea team of 1970 who yeah. in the FA Cup and the, the iconic strip that they wore that day, you know. It's yeah. just not unlike, not a million miles from Rangers, you know. I think they could have been transferable, to be honest, you know. Yeah. The, the round collar neck, just all blue. Yeah. And then, you know, Chelsea come out with the Umbro strip and they've got the, the diamonds down the side, you know. Yeah. And, and I think you've actually mentioned in your book that, that in terms of football strips, that less is more. And, I, am, uh, I think so. Yeah, I think some of the kits now. I don't. I mean, some of the Chelsea kits we've had over the last few seasons have been diabolical. I mean, I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what it's got to do with the club. I, I really am a tradition. I love that. My favourite ever kit, and I think a lot of Chelsea supporters is that nineteen seventy kit. You know, yeah. uh, just a plain blue shirt. Yeah, no name, yeah. no name on the back. I mean, I don't need to. There used to be a thing in those days. And why would you need a name on the back? Because if you don't know who they are, what are you doing there? You know, <laughs> it's you know, and I, you know, I just like like the the crew neck shirt, long sleeve. Because when I first went, uh, there were no like short sleeve shirts. It was all even long sleeves on a boiling hot day. But yeah. um, I, I mean, the kits. I mean, it's just a rip off now. The kits, isn't it? I mean, each season they're about a hundred pounds for a shirt. Yeah. Chelsea. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I think is I think as you pointed out, it's just a cash cow. It's just oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. They just so they just milk you for money. I mean, yeah, they do. Like, as in most clubs mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. A couple of other items I need to mention: the World Cup nineteen seventy eight. Hmm. You're, you're certainly not a Scotland fan. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, um, yeah, I thought we might bring that up. Yeah, I, I suppose it was. I think it was Ali McLeod, really. I, I think, I mean, yeah, what a big, was, uh... a, a big mistake, like having a picture taken with the trophy before they left <laughs> and everything. There was a bit of hubris, I think, involved in that. Um, and, of course, we know how that turned out, don't we? I mean, <laughs> it, it was, was. Was it Iran, Wasn't... they drew? I was I was really feeling bad for you. You lost the bet though in terms of a uh, Holland. Can, yeah. I think yeah. well Scotland also beat them in that tournament. I mean, you know, we yeah. Beat them too, which yeah, I'll was, uh, which, which I mean, because I think the Scotland squad of seventy eight was I mean, if we were ever going to do anything in the tournament and and, and as you rather cruelly pointed out, <laughs> we're, we're the only team not to have uh, got to uh, not the knockout stage of this uh, uh, well I think uh, you had it in your hands in 1974 if you'd have beaten yeah. Z- Zaire by more than just 2-0 yeah. because I think the yeah. Yugoslavs beat them 9 nothing, didn't they? And then yeah. Brazil, yeah. Brazil needed to beat them by three clear goals, which they did. Um, yeah, Brazil, but... Brazil beat them 3-0 and, and that, they had that guy. <laughs> that was the one where uh, oh, yeah, I they know what you were saying. the ball away from the free kick. <laughs> from a free kick. That actually yeah. happened. That happened in the game that I was playing in. I mean, a lot lower level than that. But we were playing a team of Asian kids. Uh, yeah. This is in, in the early seventies, and we got a penalty, and one of our blokes stopped up to take it, run up to take it, and one of the Asian blokes did a sliding tackle on him and cleared it, which, <laughs> which, which is unbelievable. Yeah, it really was incredible. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, you're thinking Zaire, you know, they turn up in the World Cup 1974, and yeah. you're thinking, and then they do that, and you're thinking, ah, do they know the rules? You know, I was, oh, I was I, yeah, that, that was uh, yeah, it was unbelievable, wasn't it? But I, 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 uh, my sure, I mean, we we bought David Hay after that World Cup, we'd had a great World yeah. Cup, but then he he was plagued with uh, injuries when he, he came to us, and he never really um. His career never really got going, but um, most, he was a smart player. Yeah, I mean, he, was he, was, one of them, but he was a great player, David Hay. Oh yeah, I really liked him. Yeah, I thought he was really good. Um, 
I, I think you drew one all with Yugoslavia, didn't you? In the, in the one yep, that you yeah, had. Joe Jordan, Joe, scored, yeah. Joe Jordan scored, didn't he? Yeah. I think. Yeah. In that I, game. I in, I, the Scotland and what at the World Cup, you know, and I think it's uh, we're never going to be, I don't know, drinking partners because we we just seem to either we just continually under the liver, you know, in, in terms of you know when we get to these knockout tournaments, but yeah, you know, well, I, I actually went to the World Cup in 1990, you know, for Italia 90, you know, when oh, did you? England got to the semi final, yeah, yeah. But we the Rangers support, you know, now have a kind of strange relationship with the Scotland team, to be honest, you know, there's, so there's a there's a large, you know, it's, element of our support and, and I would probably have to include myself among them who probably don't have much time for them anymore because you know there was the time when uh, I think and I think it, it may even still be true today where the bulk of the Scotland support you know are indeed Rangers fans but it's a lot yeah. less than it used to be there are some yeah. of the you know since the kind of independence thing what, what the club is over the head with that where the Rangers support I think are, you know Mostly, I mean, the vast majority, I would have to say, are kind of predominantly, you know, of a unionist persuasion. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. This independence thing is just seen as, you know, an, an absolute bunch of shysters, you know. So this, this <laughs> yeah. kind of, that's I agree. Where the, <laughs> I agree. The kind of politics and, and, and sport, you know, overlap here for us. And yeah. it certainly does for me because I, I don't have much time for them anymore. So, I mean, no. to be honest, I, I, I wouldn't see them. I wouldn't support the team who are playing them, but uh, I, I certainly, uh, if you know, if I'm about 200 yards from Stony Burn Juniors Park, and if Scotland were playing over there, I still wouldn't go and see them. So. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm like That's that about it. certain teams. Oh, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with me with England. I have no interest in England whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't affect me when they get knocked out of tournaments at all. An awful thing to say, but for me, it's always been club before country. You know, right. you, you give me the choice of uh, like Chelsea winning a trophy or England winning the World Cup. I'm, I'm afraid it'd have to be Chelsea. You know, uh, yeah. somebody asked me that the a few years ago, and they said, "Why don't you support you know in, England uh, more fervently?" And I said, "Well, I I dislike most of the the players that are playing for them, so why should I really?" Which I know is not very patriotic, but um, no, it's always been club for me. I think every true supporter would feel like that anyway. Well, I mean, it's strange you mentioned that, Neil, because exactly the same question was asked of me. Yeah. When, and we, I was actually, we were on an away trip and it was to Russia. We were in Moscow, believe it or not. Right. And uh, one of the, you know, he's done up with his bloody, like some, one of the fucking extras from Braveheart. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and he said to me, would you, would you rather see Scotland win the World Cup or Rangers win the European Cup? And I says, Without a moment's hesitation, Rangers to win the European Cup. Oh, yeah, of course. And his response to me was, you're nothing but a Hanoverian. That's what he said to me. Oh, that's and ridiculous. I him, and I says, do you know what? You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I mean, when Chelsea won the Champions League, I mean, I've won it twice now. I, I never thought I'd live to see the day. I mean, it, it mm. was just unbelievable that like, we've yeah. done that twice now, especially... That were the first London club to do it as well, which is really like sticks in the craw of Arsenal and Spurs supporters. But um, I mean, I've always had a you know, soft spot for Chelsea, but but bizarrely, eh, my boy has has more of an affinity with Chelsea, and I've actually got one of his tops on. Right yeah, now I can with see the it. Two stars above the badge. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, the two, two champions. Yeah, I mean, mates. and and one of the uh, abiding memories, obviously, he was quite young at the time, was when we were watching uh, Chelsea play Bayern Munich in the final. And oh, obviously God. Orwin knelt down, and yeah. he was, you know, a wee bit teary. And, and I'm saying, don't worry, don't worry, Johnny. I mean, there's still time yet. Still, of course. <laughs> Drogba then rattles one in off the bar. Yeah, yeah that's and right. Then, you know, uh, we were back on the rails. You if you do that, eh? Yeah. So, yeah that, was, uh, oh, that, was that. that was amazing. That run to the. I mean, everything. I think um, we were just destined to win the cup that year. The things that happened, like. Messi missing a penalty in the semi-final, and John yeah. Terry getting sent off, and then Bayern missed another penalty, didn't they? In extra time, I and Robin missed a penalty, yeah. um, and the penalty shootout we missed our first one, and then the, um, it, an unbelievable night that was really. I mean, <laughs> they were so dominant, but I, the thing you got to give Chelsea credit for is they stuck to it. You know, they, yeah. they could have been swept aside that night. Uh, 
and they stuck to and especially it was on their ground you know <laughs> by mm-hmm. Munich, they had all, all the you know they were they held all the cards that night but um yeah, yeah it was pretty you know to beat the germans on a penalty shootout or something anyway well, you mentioned that in your book, you know, about the kind of 83, 84 season where, you know, obviously with the new signings coming in that Chelsea yeah. were just a wee bit more dogged, you know, that yeah. they wouldn't roll over and, and, yeah. and they would come, you know, to go 1-0 down wasn't mean, you know, instant defeat. It was, uh, no. they did recover the situation a few times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, leading up to that season, they, uh, you know, I mentioned it in the book, getting beaten by Rotherham 6-0 yeah. and uh, some of the home defeats and everything, it was... It was grim, and I, I think a lot of the younger Chelsea supporters now, who had it, you know, like for the last twenty odd years, they've known nothing but success. Uh, if you look on Twitter, they are very impatient. When th- I mean, like last season was absolutely abysmal. You know, I thought it was a disgraceful uh, effort from some of those players. But they are really, they will not tolerate. I don't think they would have a hard job tolerating what I watched. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I, I picked that up from you that, you know, and, and again, it kind of chimes true of, of my experience at Rangers, you know, where yeah. we, would, we would have some lean spells, you know, because, we, I mean, in my time, you know, in the, the early 70s, we yeah. uh, obviously had to watch them win nine in a row. And oh, I didn't, right. didn't see Rangers win the league. I mean, I my first consciousness of Rangers winning the league was, was 1975 when, you know, I was 12. So, oh, right. You know, and they had won it uh, the previous nine years. So, I mean, I I got to the stage where I believed that we couldn't win it. It's All right, it. yeah, yeah. We just didn't do it. There's, we just couldn't do it. So that no. was kind of the breakthrough moment for me. And you know, and then we obviously in the nineties we had our own uh, nine in a row team, which then yeah. you, you get to the other end of the spectrum. And I think it's just you say that that kind of breeds that entitlement where it does. Know, as soon as the, you know there's anything goes wrong, then it's you know all oh, for yeah do them all. And you know, and then it becomes vitriolic, and you know, yeah, like, God, we're here to support the team. It's yeah. It's, I mean, I, the thing I don't know. I should imagine you hate it as well. Is the half and half scarves that they sell outside the ground now? If yeah. you get if like Chelsea are playing Liverpool, the half the scarf is blue now. Why anyone would buy a scarf like that? I have got no. <laughs> a lot at Chelsea now. There are a lot of tourists there. Mm. When you go, um, it's nothing like the old days, like the, how passionate it was then. There's sometimes it's very like people just sit there waiting for something to happen, you know. Apart from like there's one end at Chelsea, the Matthew Harding stand, which is full of the yeah. all the older Chelsea boys, but the rest of it is a lot of tourists in in London. And uh, well, yeah, do, do you know what I did after reading? Uh, you know, the you telling us about the first game back in the first division against Arsenal when you oh yeah. Library. Yeah. And, and you know, mentioned the, the the Chelsea support, so I then went on YouTube, yeah, and, and had a look at the the highlights of the game. Yeah, and I, do you know what? I was I was actually could not believe Doug Rugby was playing for Chelsea. I know. I was, <laughs> Jesus Christ Almighty, man! <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was I was behind the goal that day, but there was twenty thousand Chelsea supporters yeah. there that day, and, and it was. Came. Yeah, they absolutely took it over. Yeah, but you're right about Doug Rugby. It soon became apparent that season that he was yeah. his shortcomings. He got absolutely like torn to pieces by yeah. I think John Chidozi of Tottenham absolutely lacerated him and um he was a bit of a liability really. I don't know I, I felt a bit sorry for him sometimes because he looked so confused. <laughs> it, but, um, <coughs> yeah he, he did he last <coughs> part was in his pomp and all that do you see it? Oh just, he was highlights you know when he uh... He actually skinned one of them on the right hand touchline and oh yeah, he had a wee maze run through him and just get caught at the box, you know. So yeah, that's strange. right. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a great goal by Kerry yeah. as well. Where he's yeah, that's the right. volley. Yeah, a smashing goal and Paul Mariner, you know, because when I watched the highlights and I'm thinking, gosh, all the players that you know, because I used to get the shoot magazine delivered every week, oh, you know, and so, yeah, I did in that in that period. So I I had. Piles of these, you know, I knew all these players, you know, guys. Yeah. Like, Paul Mariner for the switch to Arsenal. And, yeah, he's no uh, longer with us, is he? He passed away, Paul Mariner. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Uh, listen, isn't, that, that's when we know we're uh, getting on a bit. You know, <laughs> listen, <laughs> one thing you're going to have to explain to me, though, and uh, I'm just going to read out some of your quotes, and there's three of them. Oh, right. right. So guess what team this is? The hated enemy. 
Spurs. The despised enemy and the loathsome mob. So, <laughs> Spurs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, why, why, what's, why have you, uh, what's the thing with Chelsea? And well, I, I think it most probably stems from the six, 1967 Cup final when we lost to them. T- uh, um, I, I was just about starting to support them, you know, like follow their results. And when I went to Stamford Bridge, I became very aware that there was a, mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of Ill, Ill feeling between uh, Chelsea and Tottenham. Uh, I, I've got two nephews who, who also Chelsea supporters, and they don't like Tottenham, but they haven't got the blinding hatred that I've got for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just absolutely loathe them. And uh, it's qu- quite uh, <laughs> it's quite bad in a way because my father-in-law is a Spurs supporter. Right. Uh, you know, um and he's had a very tough time of it over the years with me, though I've never rubbed it in. But I, I worked out the other day that I've known him 30 years um, and I've never asked him one question about Tottenham. He tries, <laughs> he tries to be polite and ask me about Chelsea. And I don't know why, because I mean, Chelsea have done the dirty on Tottenham so many times over the years, what we've done to them. I think it's a thing from that generation. All my mates were like it when I went to... It was Spurs was the game that, you know... And also they... Uh, they stayed up one year in 1975 and it was between us and them to get relegated and we lost to them at White Hart Lane. I think it stems from that. And and did you mention that you pipped them, uh, you actually stopped them winning the league title quite recently? What, is, what year was that? that uh, 2016, when Leicester right. won the title. Um, oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we played Spurs in that game where it was like they were kicking. Spurs were leading 2-0. Yeah. And then Chelsea pulled it back and Hazard scored with eight minutes to go to make it 2 all, And that handed Leicester the title, which meant that Spurs couldn't win it. I mean, that, that was a great night. That was the way we rubbed it into them. In fact, that was, that's become a bit of a joke because they were chasing Leicester down for the title. And right on the last day of the season, Spurs, they mucked it up terribly and ended up finishing third in a two-horse race because Arsenal overtook <laughs> them. Which, which is, you know, never, I mean, you know, I, I, the, talking, I suppose, the Harry Kane situation, I, I just don't know what he was thinking of it. When he was, what, 25, he, he allowed his younger brother to negotiate a six-year contract. Yeah. Uh, and that I mean, that is complete madness, isn't it? And now, I mean, to get away from Tottenham is very difficult with Levy in charge. <coughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, you love him, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, cross the T's and dotted the I's, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I guess he, he, was, had, he was involved at Rangers at one point. Oh, was he? he even, yeah, that was uh, kind of when David Murray's early days when uh, Levy was yeah was one oh, of right. Yeah, so we we know him of old. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, the other thing was you know, and and you mentioned Ken Bates a couple of times, you know, yeah, um, and and kind of thanking him for you know probably saving the club. Yeah, and and asking. And asking for change when he paid the pound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he did put it. I mean, it wasn't just like, you know, it was the off the off the field battles, wasn't it, with the property developers? Yeah. I mean, you know, they were doing deals and everything, trying to get that. I mean, I remember going to Chelsea when they're at, outside, there were people there with buckets for you to put your loose change in, save the bridge fund. Right. Yeah, we were so, so broke at the club. I mean, we, we never bought a player for about four years. But... Yeah, what? yeah, I've seen you yeah. mention that, yeah. which is unbelievable. I mean, I, I know. Talk about, gosh, I mean, this, the squad turnover these days is, and I, 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 and I entirely take your point. You know, when you uh, spoke about, you know, the the un, unrealistic expectations that football clubs may have of managers yeah. these days, you know, when, when it's just hire them eight months later, fire them next one, and and even and, and tri- all that trickling down, even to you know. Like, well, now be the first and second division in England where clubs yeah. <laughs> have, you know, very little resources, you know, whose expectations should, you know, be based on the, the surroundings round about them, you know, yeah. get, get sucked into this, you know, if if, if, if they get, lose two in a row, then, you know, their, their job becomes... Well, yeah. Know, I mean, no, I mean Watford, Watford are a great example of that. I mean, I think they've had about 19 managers uh yeah. in the last 10 or 12 years you know and it's just that thing you know but uh back in the day clubs accepted where they were in the league yeah. Yeah. but you look, look look at bournemouth a few weeks ago 
the uh, I can't remember his name now. Gary something is it? The ball. They they sacked him because they wanted to take take a, a step up to another level. Yeah. Uh, I I just don't really understand really? it. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just don't remember. You know, you've got to know, you've got to play within your limits, I think, and operate within your limits. But I mean, I, I know Chelsea went through a few managers last season, but I think I, I, I surprisingly, I'm really pleased that Pochettino's taken over because as, as much as I hate to admit it, he got Tottenham playing. Yeah, you know, some really good football. Tottenham to the Champions League final, which I never thought I'd see. I never thought I'd see Tottenham in the Champions no, League final. No, I, I don't know if you watched that. I mean, both teams were awful that night. I mean, it was yeah. such a dreadful game, but Tottenham somehow could drive to be even worse than Liverpool because they, <laughs> they just seemed like the occasion had got to them a little bit. But, you know, I mean, he, he did well getting them there and, you know, I'll give him a chance because I certainly wasn't a fan of Graham Potter when he took over. I just right. practically, I, I just knew that was going to end in disaster. When when he when he turned up because um, it's a big difference between managing like a side like Brighton. No disrespect, but when you go to Chelsea, you're expected to have a bit of presence about you, and I don't think he ever had that presence. I I, I actually spoke about the same thing to my boy because obviously, as I said, he is a wee bit more yeah. he's more Chelsea orientated, yeah. and I was saying you know, that the, the the problem for Graham Potter is that he's walking into a dressing room with large egos, guys with yeah. large you know reputations. And yeah. uh, you know, explaining to these guys how exactly you should play football, I, th- I think. Yeah, you know, I, some of the reaction must be, "Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's only one person who's ever really got away with that, and that was Jose Mourinho because he never played, he never kicked a ball professionally. But I mean, he's got the ego, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, like to dominate the, um, like when he turned up at Chelsea and everything like yeah. that. They they were like it's a a mixture of like fear and admiration for him, but I think it's yeah. few and far. If you haven't played the game at the top level, I think you're, you're going to struggle a little bit. Yeah, but I think uh, obviously Mourinho had announced himself already as the special one, so well, he had, that, yeah, that broken down some of the no, that's <laughs> right, yeah, complex barriers. Yeah, no, he uh, he built a great Chelsea side, you know, winning the league two years running. I mean. That, that was a brilliant, and only after the first season, we still hold the record. We only let in fifteen goals in that first right. season, which is pretty good going. Yeah, I, yeah Mourinho, I think is a uh, yeah, he does have something, you know, because you just look at his track record. Yeah, you know, when he's been to European finals with Porto, yeah, with the uh, Inter Milan, yeah, you know, and now Roma, you know, so yeah. he's delivered across the board, you know, so it's yeah. not down to you know one club, one set of players. No, yeah, no. Consistently. Yeah. So, Neil, I have to uh, kind of mention, you know, the music. Obviously, that's a huge part of your life. And, yeah. And, and has been, you know, throughout the... Which, yeah. which isn't for me. So forgive me if I've been kind of concentrating on the, on the football ends. But, but what we do have in common, you know, is, is your... Well, you obviously have a, a far you know, greater breadth of music and music knowledge than I do because I, I, I know nothing. Right. But in terms of the who and the kinks, you know, because in the early 80s, you know, I had the Vespa Rally 200, you know. So oh, right, yeah. Off to see the jam and, you know, uh, uh, and all of that. So I, I, I did kind of resonate, obviously, the Beatles, the who, the kinks. I mean, obviously, Elvis oh, yeah. Stale and the collections were more, were, were, were kind of number one for you. but Yeah, they were, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've actually yeah. worked with his drummer now, uh, right. Elvis Costello's drummer, which is... Uh, and, and Bowie's drummer, but did some work with him uh, a couple of years ago. Woody Woodman's even, um, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I just took up playing the guitar, and I was lucky enough in the end, like, to get a record deal and everything like that. And I s- still have, you know, I'm not doing the performing now because I'm past that. Um, yeah, but and got into bands and everything, and luckily, uh, I got to work with some of the people that I really admired. You know. Uh, when I was just a record buyer, which has been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I was my my, my brother was uh, more a a record collector, you know, as, I yeah. as you were, you know, and yeah, he would uh, he would spend time going trying to sus- uh, try and find you know rare items when. Oh, you know, I did. I was, yeah, I, I was just never into that. It was just not. No, my thing. I did. But what I did get a wee bit jealous of when you mentioned that you went to see the Kinks somewhere. Where did you see them? Uh, Reading University. Yeah, right. it was really, yeah. yeah on, on on the day we got turned away from seeing the film Greece, 
Um, oh, yeah. you know, which was pretty that was a bit, bit of a low point but that, maybe uh, I should mentioned that because uh, I think you, know, you said you shouldn't have mentioned it no and, uh, so, so, uh, yeah we saw um, we didn't actually pay to get in because um, we met somebody who had this a stamp that yeah, stamp stamp the hands and they put, uh, yeah and they were brilliant yeah really good you know, I, I do but, like the kings they've got, uh, you know, lots of uh, yeah, the, the albums and the, and, the DM and, the, and the CDs and all that. So, yeah, they're great. You know, Davis and Dave Davis, although they, I think they fight like Cat and Doug, but I mean, I think they were, uh, they did, see, yeah. And the Who, I mean, did, did, did I right think thinking that you saw the Who at, Val, at the Valley, yeah, at Charlton in 1974, yeah, right. went to see them there, yeah. That, um, I, I think they must I, have been I, in the pomp in that day, that must have been uh, the Who and the Lady. Yeah, so the Who, uh, Lou Reed was on, Humble Pie, uh, Lindisfarne. Um, but by the time the Who came on, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last book or the one before that, it was, I mean, it was 80,000 there that day. And in those days, the, uh, there was no food, no drink. You're underneath the sunshine. You couldn't find, <laughs> a, to- you couldn't find a toilet anywhere. And it just so yeah. happened that Scotland were playing England that day at Hamden right. Park. And we had a lot of Scots behind us. And the the idiot of the, the announcer said that Scotland had beaten England 2 nil, And that was it. We, all of a sudden, we were being like, bottles were being thrown, like whiskey bottles. And I had to get hold of my sister and pull her down to the ground and everything. And the whole atmosphere, yeah, that was... I, by the time they came on, I was, I'd had enough, really. I mean, they were fantastic and everything. But, my, you know, I hadn't had water since about 11 o'clock in the morning and they didn't come on to about 10 at night and everything yeah. so yeah and I, I think i saw them after that as well at the uh wembley arena the empire pool but yeah right. but, but, but you know it's great to think that i've actually you know seen the original lineup with keith moon and and we no yeah. longer with us yeah yeah they're, they're brilliant group though my number one group of all time is the beatles i mean i, I just think they're the yardstick for what everything else should be judged by yeah, yeah, <clears throat> no, the Beatles, yeah, absolutely yeah. fantastic. I, my, my boy, you know, he he does he plays guitar and he. Uh, oh, does he? he? Yeah, he was watching. Uh, uh, he's he had it on for days. It was like some sort of uh, documentary, and it was just this. Uh, I think they were in the Abbey Studio. Abbey oh, yeah. Studio. Well, the there's get a back. video of them. Yeah, when they just you just play constantly, and then they'll play this song, and then. You know, it shows you them up on the roof and then they're back down and they're yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah, I've watched that yeah. film. Yeah, I'm a big Beatles fan. I actually did yeah. some work in Abbey Road, which was like the best thing ever, really. Mm-hmm. So I've been in I've been in that studio where they recorded all their stuff, which was that was the maker. Yeah, I thought I'd never ever get to do that. I mean, when you start out in bands, you never think you're gonna end up at Abbey Road. But yeah, that was a, a brilliant time to be working there. Neil, uh, my sister stays in Gravesend. All right, Kent, yeah. Yeah, so when we were getting the train from Charn Cross out, we would pass the valley in the train, you know, and, and yeah. when she's she's been down there since the early 80s, so when we uh, passed it, first of all, you know, it was, you know, an enormous ground. At oh, it time. is, yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a fraction. Of, I don't know what the, the capacity of uh, is now. Yeah, because so, in those days, it had great big open terracing. You know, That's there's right. only like real one main stand, and the rest of it was all open terracing. But um, yeah, I mean, huge, like, huge ground. I mean, it was that, do you know what it was like? It was like Murrayfield because when you drive, when you get the train into Edinburgh, you pass Murrayfield, and right, you know, it was, a, it was a, the old Murrayfield, not the, the one that is there now. Yeah, the, you know, with the huge terracing but yeah. on one side of the ground, which I think it must have held forty thousand on its own. Oh God, yeah, you know? yeah, it was yeah. an amazing so, place, but um. It, uh, it was a school by error by one of my mates because he said, oh, let's go down the front. We can get a good ear bashing down the front. And we got down the front, as I say, and then that was it. We were stuck there for the rest of the day. And I, I'd taken my younger sister along with me as well, and I felt a bit responsible for her because, it was, you know, we were get, looking back now, we were getting dehydrated, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we hadn't had any food or water for hours on end, just standing there, and it was a really hot day as well. So, I mean, I, you know, it was known as the Valley. Yeah, I mean, festivals now are so, you know, they're much better organised now. Uh, you know, it's nothing like in those days, you just bought a ticket and took, you know, took your chances, really. But, uh, you know, I'm glad. I think that was the last. I'd been to see Elton John a couple of weeks before uh, another right. concert with him and Rod Stewart. 
but that Who one was the last festival uh, I ever went to. No more. That was enough I, for me. I did like your comments about Rod Stewart, you know, and the uh, yeah, the <laughs> you know, this <laughs> four Scotsman that he is. But the, the one that I loved best, Wall, was you know, kind of when you were talking about you know the music scene 1980, and the the, the, the phrase that you used was 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 fantastic when uh, you just titled them frilly shirted mannequins <laughs> they were though weren't they let's be honest it was, it was quite yeah. that new, i don't know what you thought but that new ram, romantic thing i thought was absolutely dreadful yeah you know, that was, it was not my thing at all like you know it was the jam and, and the kinks and oh and yeah the, yeah i didn't all that spandau ballet and uh yeah frilly mean, shirted mannequins that just uh, sums them up perfectly i think yeah, I mean, recently, it's quite bizarrely, I had a, a Twitter feud with uh, Midjur. Right. Um, yeah, because he he wrote in his book that um, what, my favourite guitar player of all time, the one that really inspired me to learn, was Mick Ronson, who was with David Bowie. He was his right. guitarist during the Ziggy day. And Midjur said in his book, uh, I had to sack Mick because he wasn't, like, you know, getting into the songs. So I sent him a tweet. I said, no wonder... He's not getting into the songs compared to the songs that you wrote, you know, <laughs> next, next to David Bowie. And that was it. My God, I had all of his fans tweeting me and everything oh, like that. And this battle he did as well. He went berserk, Midjur. And the more berserk he went, the more catty I was getting with him like that. And he couldn't stand it. And his fans were all having – I'm telling you now, the tweets were coming in like, every minute. But I enjoyed – in the end, I blocked them all. You know, so. <laughs> but that, that was quite fun. I just couldn't, yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, Midjury should have known well enough to think, well, you know, I've had a successful career. Why should I be bothered about someone t- taking a dig? Yeah. But it's just that he happened to like take a dig at one of my, uh, and Mick Ronson's not around anymore. I mean, he died yeah, quite young. I did defend himself, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that was quite interesting. I, that's good. I mean, what I have to f- find out from you, though, is, uh, how are the Chelsea support? You know, now that you know you're post Abramovich, or is it yeah. Ab- Ab- Abramovich or Abramovich? Or how do you see his? his I say Ab- Abramovich. I think that's what's. I know it's pe- uh, yeah, some people say Abramovich, but I think it's Abramovich. Abramovich I've heard, yeah. You know, is, but I, I don't know whether there's a Russian yeah. way of. But I mean, now that you're uh, you're kind of clear of that guy, is yeah. how is the mood at Chelsea? Is that seen as a good thing, a bad thing, or? <laughs> Or he's a, he's well, been the victim of politics or whatever. What's the, yeah, the I mean, there was a witch hunt, wasn't there? You know, at the time of the Ukraine invasion, yeah. it seemed that Chelsea were responsible for starting that war. I mean, you know, uh, MPs in Westminster are all like ganging up to get us put out of business. Uh, the Americans have had a hard time of it since they've come in. There's no, I mean, some of the tr- the money they've spent. I mean, 600, 600 million to finish twelfth in the league. Um, yeah. But I think we've got to give them and see who we buy this summer because I, I'm glad personally that some of those players have gone now, uh, like Havertz and Mount. I didn't have a lot of time for them, really. Um, and I think it's it, we we need we need a shake up, you know, at, yeah. at the club. I mean, I, I I think I do think that if Abramovich um, had been at the club, I don't think Tuchel would have been sacked, and I don't think Potter would have even got near that job. <laughs> um, so they made some, but you know they've got. A, I think they've built an infrastructure now of football people behind the scenes because I think at the beginning that Todd Bodie was uh, trying to be the director of football as well, and he he doesn't know anything about the game. I mean they just splashed money right, left, and centre, didn't they? But um, yeah, just see what happens now. I'm mean, obviously they're going to buy a few players, um, but yeah, I think Abramovich was one of the best owners, and they they seem to forget the British government that during the COVID crisis. Abramovich uh, opened up the hotel at Chelsea, uh, uh, hotels that he owned there, uh, and gave them to the rooms so free to NHS staff, right. so they could carry on yeah. working. As, as where uh, Tottenham, um, Levy wanted to charge them uh, because they were going to set up a vaccination place on there. He wanted to charge them rent the <laughs> the NHS for putting a, a vac- vaccination centre on Tottenham's grounds. Which I thought was so, so. Is the mood amongst the Chelsea fans that you know you, Abramovich was hard done by, and and that... yeah, I think he was. I definitely think mm-hmm. he was. Right? He he tried to broker uh, like a, a piecings for like getting people out of Ukraine, and it just seemed that there was a witch hunt, and you know, and 
when it came to Chelsea, everyone like jumped on the bandwagon. I mean, it was it yeah, was uh, this quite was the bizarre. Times, you know? I, th I think there's, you know, that kind of, as again, chimes with the Rangers, you know, when obviously we had a run in with HMRC. Oh, yeah. It was almost, it was almost like a, a, a feeding frenzy, you know, they wanted to, yeah. uh, whoa, you know, now their weak attack, yeah. you know, and, and there was all sorts of, uh, you know, people who you would have yeah. came out of woodwork who kind of declared their hand, you know, and yeah. at that time, when, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was nasty. And yeah. Because there was actually no need for most of that, but the the, the Scottish football authorities took that took the opportunity while Rangers were weak to actually you know plunge yeah. the knife right into their back and 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 I for one you know will, will, have never been to an away ground since and I'll never be in another away ground because I just refuse to give them any money. Yeah, so quite right. I just do it anymore. Just as a matter, I know Rangers support will hoover up all the away tickets that the uh, yeah. That are going, but I just I just can't bring myself to hand these people any money because they they did their best to damage my club and uh, and for that yeah. I will never forgive them. Well, so, I feel the I feel the same because I mean back in two thousand and nineteen we had a transfer embargo put upon us yeah. and we couldn't buy players for a year. Yeah. Now Manchester City have committed one hundred and fifteen violations of UEFA's rules. They've just been caught out again. They received sixty million from to unknown people that they didn't declare. but And then UEFA banned them from Europe, uh, the Champions League, for two years, then rescinded it, yeah, a court yeah. of arbitration. And they, they've got away with it. It's where Chelsea were absolutely pilloried for what they did. And that's before you even get to, the, you know, the, the shenanigans of Barcelona and Real Madrid. Oh, it's unbelievable, it's, isn't it? It's, that's on a completely different level because the... Yeah. the how they get away with that, the amount of oh, no. and then it all seems to disappear, you know, when the local authority will bail them out as they did with Real Madrid. Yeah. Which is yeah. absolute nonsense. It is, it really is yeah. Nonsense. And they talk about, you know, financial fair play. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I oh, know, it's ridiculous. Really? No, absolutely, absolute nonsense. But it's, yeah. uh, so that's, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done. You know, okay. Is there anything you, you want to kind of get? No, no, that's good. I've okay. really enjoyed it. It's been really good. Well, uh, to be honest, I absolutely loved reading your book. There was just so much that I could connect with, just right. in terms of the periods with which it happened. You yeah. know, the fact that I, I had been to a few Chelsea games that season, 83-84, because at that time I was yeah. uh, I was in West London and you know, Chelsea are obviously the... The, yeah, one of the Blues brothers. So actually, yeah. in, on one occasion when I went to the bridge, and I went through the turnstile, and the guy behind the turnstile had a Rangers top on. Oh so, yeah, and and I thought, you know, I've clearly come to the right place. Yeah. So I, and, I and then to... Just to, when oh. I was when I was working my way through your book, and I and I'm thinking, I think that I think we're heading to the Leeds game, which is, which is going kind to of seared in my memory. Yeah, that's right. The, the Chelsea fans that they were absolutely, yeah. you know, they just so, they wanted it so much. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, the atmosphere was, uh, was, was I, I something think, else. I, I think you'd enjoy that if you give me your uh, your address or something. I'll send you the 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 first two books in the trilogy as well if you want. Right. Mm. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll I'll just email you them. I've got I've got. Uh, well, call if if I I do have your email address. I do have your oh, email right. address. Yeah, and I can send you oh, the yeah. first because I think that's the, the first one's about the 1970 team, um, yeah. and the second one is about the 77 side under yeah. Eddie McCready during that. But again, it's not just about that; it's about growing up and the music and all yeah. that. Yeah. That's what I set out to do. First of all, the publisher wasn't too certain about that, and I, I just thought, well, people, you know, so many people write the same old football books, don't they? Like yeah. we what we what I, I thought, make it more personal. Yeah, because see the stuff we use in your mates, you know, going to uh, you know the pre-match drinks and the post-match drinks. Yeah, it just it just all it was. I was doing exactly the same. Yeah, the yeah. So yeah, I've, just, I've, uh, I've had a lot of messages from Chelsea supporters, a lot of the same vintage as me, um, saying that exactly the same. You know, it brought it all back to me what it was like in those days yeah. and everything. So <clears throat> I think. It, it's worked out quite well, but I'm going to give writing a rest for a while now because I've I've written three books in four years. So, and it's it's a five. I think, five, 
five day a week struggle for me to be quite honest. I think the, the important message you see in your, your defence of the Chelsea fans, you know, when compl- people were complaining. Yeah. And I think it was one trip to Watford, you know, when they're moaning yeah. about you know, that there's so many Chelsea fans here. Yeah. I, this exactly the same is true of Rangers, you know, when they turn up. And yeah. in the seventies, I would say, you know, and in the eighties. There, yeah. was, uh, there was, as you, I think the word you used was edge, and there is an edge to, yeah. Yeah. An edge to the Chelsea fans. There is an edge yeah. to the Rangers fans. I'll give you, yeah. I'll give you quickly. I'll give you one cracking example. I went to see Rangers play Porto in Porto, which was about 1982, 83. Right. And we went, we were, we won the first leg two one. Yeah. And we went over to Porto. So it was their old ground. It wasn't the the Drago, the one that they built for the right. European Championship that they held. It was their old ground, 60,000 there. But yeah. with us, there must have been about 25, 30 Chelsea fans. Oh, right. And when we uh, got outside, the Chelsea fans were, we'd obviously been held in the ground after it. And when we got outside and we got down to the gates, you know, after going down the stairs yeah. to, street level and yeah. then they opened the gates and the Chelsea guys were at the front and the Porto fans who were about 50 yards away you know there must have been five six thousand of them you know yeah. like, I don't know how many deep yeah but the Chelsea fans you know as soon as the gates opened took five paces outside and then charged the Porto fans <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh my god yeah. and there's a guy running about with a big umbrella Baton club and all the Porto fans, and they would not would not go near the Chelsea supporters. No, no. They could, there was no more than thirty of them. I know they, uh, they, they've always had a wild support, Chelsea, much much yeah. more fervent support than uh, I think any other, apart from West Ham. I think most yeah. probably uh, Millwall uh, are not very pleasant, but yeah, Chelsea had a as I say, I used to go to away games, and you could see like the towns that they were going to were very wary. Of the yeah, yeah. the Chelsea support, I, I I mentioned in an earlier book, I got like punched in the face by a policeman, uh, yeah. a real backhander because we were going to Highfield Road, Coventry, and they were leading a shoe. Then all of a sudden, I really wanted to go to the toilet, and I saw a garage across the road, so yeah. I said to my mate, "Oh, look, I'm just going to nip across. I'll catch you up." And as I stepped out of line, this copper just whacked me right in the face and yeah. said, "Get back, you Cockney bastard!" and everything. <laughs> threw me back in the line again. Yeah. So, yeah, our reputation wasn't wasn't that great, really. But um, yeah. I, it's getting I, a retaliation in first, really tight situation. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, they've yeah, I know, I mean, it's the same with the Rangers fans. You know, there was the, the re- reputation preceded them. Therefore, yeah, you know, the response was one. It was uh, you know sometimes completely unjustified. Yeah, you know, I think. They almost set it off, yeah, because it's what they were expecting. They, 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 and they, they made, they created the situation. Oh, they did. They yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, that's yeah, what I've happened. Seen yeah, that a few times. Yeah. So Neil, that was. Uh, I think we'll just uh, wrap it up there, if that's okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, fine. I, I, listen, I, I can thoroughly recommend anyone who's listening. I can thoroughly recommend your book, Rebirth of the Blues. It's uh, it's just the, the the journey of Chelsea back to the first division. But from a proper football fan's point of view, and yeah. and your your stories, you know about Vicky and and Claire oh. and, and all of that, you know, <laughs> just the personal background of all of that, yeah, yeah, just, uh, just brings it all brings it all straight back to me, you know, yeah. in, in terms of my own situation, and yeah, it was uh, I did laugh out loud at a couple of moments. I think the the frilly shirted mannequins was one of them. Yeah, and they also the ridiculous thing when I'm with the um the uh. Dressing gown out in court. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. The, so, uh, your Chelsea supporter got in touch with me about that. He said he's never heard of such an absurd story of having yeah. to bury it at sea on a pedalo. I mean, it, you couldn't make that yeah. up, really. Well, that, that's uh, things abroad, you know, because I think you, you just feel that bit more vulnerable when you're, you you're not in blight anymore. You don't know <laughs> yeah. what these, these guys will do to you. No, that's right. Yeah, I didn't fancy that at all. <laughs> yeah. So, we're going to leave it there, Neil. Thank you okay. very much. It was an absolute pleasure to read your book, I and mean, I can thoroughly recommend it. Uh, <clears throat> I will never see Spurs in the same light again, you know. When, <laughs> I'll, I'll forever know them as the loathsome mob. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the first book, there I'll just tell you before I go, in the first book, there is two chapters. One is called Loathe Story, part one, and that's all about Tottenham. And Loathe Story, part two, is about Liverpool, who are just behind Spurs in my dislike, right. really. Yeah. 
yeah so yeah that that's uh quite um okay eye, eye opening what i put in that okay neil <clears throat> well right. thank you everyone for listening and uh we'll see you all in the next one thanks bye-bye